Okay. So Sorry. just if for the recording's purposes, mm -hmm. we had uh, approved, we opened the meeting at 511. The meeting, uh, we started the recording late. <laughs> we had approval of the agenda with a, a motion by Tony, a second by Larry Grossell, no justice made to the agenda passed unanimously. Moving on to agenda item number three, approval of the March minutes um, of our recorded meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the March 16th, 2022 minutes as presented. And I'll second the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye or put a thumbs up. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposition seems to have passed. It has passed. Motion carries, minutes approved. Next up, the most exciting part of this meeting, the election of officers. We, uh, open the floor for nomination of officers. Um, and I would like to make a nomination. I would like to nominate Tony Ferraro, member from Pittsburgh as chair of the Audit Communications Union District. Are there any other nominations? Uh, <laughs> Seeing that there are none, um, I mean, we can vote on it, but uh, all those in favor of Tony Ferraro being the chair of the Autocrate Communication Union District signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> any opposition? Aye. Oh, good. No oppositions. <laughs> Our new chair shall I run the meeting going opposed. forward. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. So with that, I'll hand the meeting over to Tony Ferraro. Oh, bless your heart. Well, you guys, you you folks will have to um, kick me back into play if I screw up the Robert's uh, Rules of Order uh, stuff. Okay, so the treasurer. Nominations for treasurer. I'd like to nominate Jackie Zavella, Representative Moore from Brandon. Any other nominations for treasurer? Be online now. I don't see him. He is Jackie Isabella. She's wearing purple. She has black hair. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh huh. And she's she's not the handsome guy with the mohawk, the faux hawk. Yeah. That's how you that's how you say your last name, <laughs> Yeah. It's the real Jackie. So. Sure. The real Jackie. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> hearing no other um, nominations for treasurer, uh, all those in favor of uh, Jackie Savella being the treasurer for the OCCUD signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Jackie is the. <laughs> Congratulations, Jackie. Yay. Thank you. Yay. Congratulations. Okay, Secretary. How about Jessica Van Ort from Poland? I could do it. I'm Secretary for a couple other boards I'm on, so why not? Right. I know that. Yay. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica, for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Any other nominations for secretary? Going once, going twice. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all those in favor, uh, vote by saying aye or thumbs up, please. Aye. aye. Okay. The ayes have it. Jessica Van Ort from Paulette is the secretary for the OCCUD. Okay, uh, changes to the executive committee. I'm not sure exactly what that was supposed to. Um, that uh, I put that on there not knowing any better. Uh, I didn't know if we change over. Are there any changes that we need to make to the executive committee? None that I can think of. Uh, I think John Hill wrote me and said he was okay with it. And uh, Chris Custer also. 
okay with what? I don't think I'm okay I'm... with being remaining on the committee. Oh, okay. Is there anybody? Is there anybody who wants off or needs off, or wants on or needs on? <laughs> okay, so I, can we get a motion to continue to to keep the membership of the executive committee? The same. Now, here's a question: Am I on the executive committee? Because I don't believe I was ever elected to the executive committee. But I guess now that I'm chairman, I am automatically. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I, I I had you on there already. I'm not sure from what that when I oh, okay. stepped in, you were already on that list. But, we voted you on. I remember. Uh, it's Bill Moore, okay. former chair. I remember. I remember you. Uh, you got voted on. Okay. A few meetings ago. All right. So uh, I guess we can we get a motion that the executive committee no changes to the executive committee and a vote. Do we need to vote on that, or we just need to be silent on it? I'll make a motion to keep our executive committee exactly the same. Okay. Second. Any, any objections? Vote. Uh, folks uh, in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. All righty. And do we have any other officers that need election or need replacement? No. Okay. Do we have a vice chair or we never had one? We just have a chair. I don't know. Do we yeah, have I'm a just, vice chair, Bill? Was there ever one? We don't need uh, one. Uh, you know what? Cassandra, you might remember. Did, do we have a vice chair? No, we didn't. Okay, yeah. So we never we haven't had a vice chair before. All right. Do we do we want one, Larry? Do you think we need one? Well, just in case the um in case I get run over by not available. I mean, it's just a question of who runs the meeting. It would go down to either the treasurer or the secretary. And that, that would work. Okay. All right. So nothing we don't need to do anything different, I guess, is what okay. you're saying. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this next this next item, uh, exec executive committee update. So, um, welcome to new representatives. So, um, I thought so. We we've, we've got Mark uh, Mark mm -hmm. Teeter. Mm -hmm. um, you, what what town are you representing now, Mark? I, I think I missed from it. From Pultney. From Pultney. Oh, from Pulteney. Okay. South of and, Castleton. Yep. And uh, Jessica, I thought Jessica. Yeah, I was on last year. Just somehow I got dropped off the email list. You've been on. Yeah, I thought you were on. Already. Yeah, I missed like January and February because yeah. I didn't get I emails. I remember you got but elected. I'm as, here. You got elected or appointed to the board the same around the same time I did, I think. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, okay. I'm here now. All right. And then. So we have a we had a request, or I actually we had an approval, I guess, from uh, Shrewsbury to join the OCC UD. They their select board voted to um, to join the uh, the OCUD, which is <clears throat> which is good because I guess that 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 sort of expands our reach and also expands some of the federal, or sorry, the state money that we're. Uh, sort of entitled to as a as a CUD. Um, do we need to vote on this on, on accepting them? Is that, um, is that what I'll, I understand? I'd yeah. make a motion to accept Shrewsbury as a new member of the Audit Communication Union District. Mm. I'll second. Okay. And any discussion we needed? Any uh, are we ready to vote? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor, say aye or thumbs up. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. Ayes have it. Uh, I guess Shrewsbury is now newly a, newly a member of the OCCUD, and do we need to? I guess officially notify them now. Is that? I think I have to. Uh... Rob said that I just needed to let them know as soon as we had uh, this official vote. And then, okay. uh, and they their rep is not here. 
Yes, I am. Yes. Laura, oh, you all. Oh, sorry, Laura. Yeah. I yeah. Didn't you were here. Um, so do you just need me to uh, notify my select board or no, if, I, or you guys need to? I think I we think can just us. I okay. think we can just notify the select board that uh, or we can, you know, print out the minutes of meeting that say that uh, the OCC oh. approved the um, approved Shrewsbury joining. So and mm. I don't think there's any other. And I'll send it to Rob Fish. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Well, welcome. Yeah. I see, Laura, you're on the Rutland Regional Planning Commission, too, from Shrewsbury. Yes, I am. So am I. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Next, uh, the next agenda item, I guess, is an update on the status of the RFP for our, our partnership. So the RFP was issued. Was it was issued on? Uh, was it? What was the date? The, the I believe it was the second or something, right? Of May. It was, it was last Monday. So whatever, whatever this Monday was, a week prior to that. Yeah, eighteenth, maybe. No, I think it was the eighteenth. Yeah. It would have. Yeah, it would have been the eleventh, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, not April. Yeah. It's not April. Oh, yeah, it is April. Duh. My brain's not working very well. Mm -hmm. So I guess it was the, the uh, 11th. And we originally gave uh, folks, uh, I think, three weeks to respond. We've had a request, I know, to extend the response period by a few days, I believe. And um, till I think it was the 25th. Is that correct? Yes, um, the, to the 25th. Yeah, and um, so I I I don't believe we have any any driver that would say we couldn't do that. My, I guess my only concern is to make sure that we make sure that everybody gets that information in a timely fashion, so that uh, you know we're not just answering back to one party that they have extra time, but, but the other parties don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how we, excuse me, I guess we can, we can post it on our website, but how do we sort of um, make sure that folks know that? Any suggestions or thoughts or? So we can put a post on the website and I've added a page because we're, we're gonna need a place to post questions and answer sooner or later. So I've, I've created a new page that won't show up yet. Okay. Um, but then we should probably send uh, an email to the email group that you first sent it out to, Tony. Yeah, I can I can send out an email for uh, the the you know I can res uh, send out an email response to the email that I used to send it out. The problem with that is that. A lot of people it went to their junk mail, apparently. Right. Um, so the worry I have is that that um, you know some folks will get it, uh, other folks may not. So, but um, you know we 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 can post it, and I guess if we get a response early, we can we can tell folks that that we're going to give them more time. I don't know, does anybody have any more discussion or more thoughts or, or any objections to this plan? Uh, I'm sorry, but what does the RFP do? So the RFP is for us. So, so the, the, the sort of over, overarching philosophy for the way we're approaching um, universal service mm -hmm. in the, the CUD is that we're, we're seeking to partner with um, someone who will basically be the uh, operator and maintainer of the network. Um, and so uh, this RFP is to see who the interested parties may be, who, who would want to be the, 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 um, the builders and, mm -hmm. and operators and maintainers of this network. Okay. That provides universal service for all of our residents. 
in all the different towns for all the different towns and mm -hmm. we we've we've we recognize that that probably will be more than one person or one more than one company that would be able right. to do that because there's sort of um there's there's sort of incumbent folks who um you know have a big presence or a big footprint in our various towns mm -hmm. okay looking forward to reading it say again i'm looking forward to seeing it and reading it yeah yeah so it's on our website if you want to read it mark sure. um, and Thank you. We, can, we can certainly uh send it to you i guess man you could send it to him um if you're if you don't want to grab it off the website no no but, the website sounds fine so. but just to be clear this rfp is just for project management services no the rfp is for oh. uh, there are two rfps that's there's what i RFP, linked oh okay there's an rfp for project management services which i believe was posted today is that right ben or was it yesterday uh no oh. it just went up today went out today maybe, maybe last but, night but there's a there's a there's a bigger RFP for a partner to help us build and then operate and maintain this network. I can't find that on the website. I know uh, you said it's posted there, but unfortunately, they've all been posted under blog. Under yeah. blog. Yeah, go to blog and you should see it there. It should the project management one should be listed at the top. Got it. All right. So Goodbye, just a quick Ella. question, how long were we extending the one for, the one for um, operating network? I believe it was to the 25th was the request that we got. Right. If we did have it as May 2nd, and they asked for, uh, for it to be out, moved out to May 25th. So it's not just a couple of days, it's basically three weeks it's like three it's it's a three week extension i guess i've got my my dates confused because i thought it was closer to i thought it was just a few days that we were asking to um to extend it okay i, I just put a link into the uh the chat for the rfp for that rfp So what are what do folks think about this extension of time? Hi, Van. Oh, sorry. Um, this is Bill. Um, I'm cool with it in as much that like, I mean, we, you know, we spent a lot of time building this and we gave them three weeks to sort of respond. And I mean, they're, you know, they're gonna be our partner or a potential partner. I have no problem. I, I, I have no problem with it. And it's just that, I mean, we're asking them for a lot of information if they think it shows due diligence and that they want to go through it with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, I guess I'm not I, philosophically. I don't have a problem with extending it. I, I guess I missed the fact that it was such a long extension, but unless there's something that's driving us to do to, to get an answer sooner rather than later, I think we'd want to give them time to give us a good robust response. Yeah, I totally agree with that because, you know, as business goes, answering something like that takes a lot of time. They have to break their schedule and get the right people. And it's hard to do that in short time frame because looking at RFP over, there's a lot of things that they got to fill in there and they got to do diligence and talk to their business people as if they even want to do this or if it makes sense. Yeah, and I think the folks who had asked us had asked us so that they could do basically do some preliminary engineering work uh to support i guess their cost estimate and, and build out schedule and things like that so I, I okay all right so we will i don't think we need a approval by the board or anything like that i think it's more of a uh, nobody nobody really has any objections i think we can just um revise the the rfp post it 
uh, email it to everyone who um, who has it, and then uh, uh, go from there. Unless anybody thinks that we need to approve that, I don't think we. I don't think the board approved the the original timeline, so I don't see any reason that the board needs to change to approve a change to that. Okay, I'll work on that tomorrow. If we sent out more of a letter as an email to whoever you sent the RFP out, is there a chance that that possibly wouldn't go into their junk mail instead of like resending out the whole RFP? Just as a thought. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm all I'm all ears for how we we get it to not go into folks junk mail. I mean, we we sent it from the info at occ.org org, o -O -O um, email address right. Becky and right. um, you know, it got it got picked up. I know at least uh, two or three uh, folks um, reached out and said it got picked up in their spam folder. And I actually got sort of a response or I, I saw a response that, that came back from uh, one of the email addresses that it was it was flagged as, um, you know, suspicious or whatever. So. Right. We may want to wonder if it came through as just a single, yeah, a single email instead of like an attachment, if it might possibly go through. And if some people actually pick it up and move it out of their spam folder, that a single email might go through. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can do that. And, and then know. we can do that. And we can, in the email, we can just say that we've, we've updated the, um, the dates in the. Right. Right. In the RFP. Maybe we, yeah. In the email, you just include a link to the, uh, to the website and that way they would get yeah we did it that way last time too um van and it, that didn't seem to work any better but yeah, uh, jackie's been... idea of just a bare sort of email with no links or anything um is is a is a good one i think to just at least get folks yeah. um at least, at least get folks to um you know be on notice that something's changed. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? Anything else on this topic? Uh, on the next topic. The appointment reappointment of board reps. Um, I've received now probably I'm up to four towns, and we're we're just on the working assumption that if you were a rep in the past, uh, you will remain on, on there until pried from our cold dead fingers. Uh, so we're I think we're okay there. I didn't hear from a. I did get. I got uh, Jessica. I got your email address, and, um, so we, you know, cleaning up a few. And Mark Teeter, I got yours. So there's a few few changes that are coming through, but not much. So I think we're I think we're good on that one. Okay. The status on the project manager that uh, just got posted. Haven't received anything yet. Um, okay. Your forward of the info at OCCUD, that seems to be working fine. Uh, it's working outlook, for you? Yeah, my outlook was throwing it into a different folder altogether for a bit, but I got, okay. it, I got that fixed. All right. Um, any Anything else for the executive, from the executive committee? I don't see anything else, right? So, um, I guess, Larry, do you want to give us a Vacuda update? Uh, okay, so 
uh, for the new members, uh, VACUDA is acronym for Vermont Communications Union Districts Association. Uh, it's made up of a governing board with a representative from each of the nine CUDs in Vermont. Uh, we have a program coordinator and we meet twice a month. Uh, so that's basically, I'll get into a minute what they do. Um, just to get into the report, uh, we've met twice this month, April 4th and the 18th, which is just past Monday. Uh, there was a, um, there is a fee that just started a yearly fee um, to be a member of Bakuda. And our fee is, is $9,500 a year. Um, we were told that we didn't have to pay it until we had a pre-construction grant. Uh, which we don't have yet, but that might have been a mix up uh, from the program director. So anyways, at our last executive meeting, we decided to pay 25% of that, which is $2,375. And we added that to the warrant. And we had a brief discussion of whether we will uh, continue to be a member of Bakuda uh, next year. And I believe Southern Vermont CUD had that same discussion. Uh, on the 18th, we had uh, Ted Brady, who is the executive director of VLCT, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Bakuda is a member of VLCT. Uh, he just basically explained uh, all the programs that, are, uh, that they do at VLCT. Uh, and then we had a, a question that caught him a little off guard on ARPA funds. Um, VLCT is strongly, along with Rutland Regional Planning, recommending that municipalities, whether it's Board of Aldermen or Select Boards, take the standard allowance for revenue loss, and that money is to be used for government services. Um, there's a little snag in that. Um, then I, I heard there's, I've been calling everyone on this uh, since we went through dealing with FEMA after tropical storm, storm Irene uh, for six years, we wanna make sure we get everything right. Uh, the snag from what I've heard is they're working on it in the legislature. Uh, basically it goes back to Act 71 um, that came out of the legislature to form CUDs, uh, basically saying that uh, there would be no municipal funds to be used for the CUDs. And that was the incentive to get select boards to sign on to it. And that's still true. Uh, the question is that when you take the standard allowance, that money now moves into your operating account, into your budget, whether you use it for reserve funds or, you know, it's up to you. As long as it's used for government services, uh, the question is now, is that money, uh, public money, taxpayers' money, and back to Act 71, can we use it for... Uh, ARPA uh, or for uh, Otter Creek CUD or any CUD. So um, at the time Act 71 came out, uh, the money coming from the federal government was strictly for uh, broadband, water and sewer, and other infrastructure projects. And that didn't fit into a lot of, especially rural municipalities that don't have water and sewer. So then the final rule came out from the US Treasury Department in January and took effect this month where you can take this standard allowance and the reporter, reporting is much easier. So I guess in Montpelier, they're trying to straighten this out. The last I heard, I've, I've heard from different sides in reps that it's still okay for a municipality to take the standard allowance and use the money for um, CUDs. Uh, but at the same time, I heard they're doing a fix in Montpelier, so it's wait and see. Uh, VLCT is still cautioning select boards to move slowly on using their ARPA funds. So uh, that's all being researched. Uh, we did approve an RFP for financial services for entering the bond market. Um, as I reported before, uh, many of the CUDs have entered the bond market. Um, we're, we're trying to avoid doing that, but I don't know if that's possible. We'll see. Also, there's discussion on two different cable 
in hardware, hardware suppliers, uh, different CUDs are, are using different ones. One is Calix and the other is Adtran. Uh, then there was discussion of mixing and matching. Um, you got the cable hardware, your cabinets, software on your platform. There's ways of doing it, but I think the consensus is once your CUD picks a supplier to stick with that supplier um, because service down the road, they open up a cabinet, somebody else's um, hardware is in there, they not, may not be able to fix it right up. So, um, so they're gonna pretty much a consensus was stick with your supplier. Uh, that may not even be an issue for us. Um, the wait times for material and the labor shortage um, is significant. Uh, some of the, the CUDs that had a five-year build-out plan now could be stretched out to 10 years. Um, the one thing is, is with the supply chain of everybody's after the cable and the hardware, uh, but then you have the labor shortage to install it. That's, that's a big issue. Uh, the Vermont Community Broadband Board, uh, there's $95 million in ARPA funds in the capital budget. Uh, each of the nine CUDs is in a different stage of the network build out process and each is taking a different approach to getting the job done. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we have a whole different approach. We do in Southern Vermont CUD as to what the other uh, seven CUDs are doing. And I think the other thing was getting back to our ARPA money and, and um, Southern Vermont CUD members are not asking their select boards for ARPA funding for CUD. So but we are, as soon as we get this straightened out. Uh, the reason goes down to um, kind of this, the final cost of network construction determines the rates which customers pay. As such, the greater portion of funding that comes from grants, the lower the cost of service. Affordability starts with construction and the most sustainable way to create affordable rates is by building a network with as little debt as possible. I think that's one of our primary goals. So that's it for Vakuda. Any questions or discussion for Larry? Okay, thank you for the update, Larry. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Uh, what's next? Grant updates. Um, uh, I don't have any updates on grants. Uh, okay, we're we're not we haven't applied for anything. Right? There's none. Yeah, there's no. But we do have we do have. Uh, I get was it monthly reporting obligations? Yes, on H three fifteen we report on that monthly. Okay, and when's the next one due? Do you know, Van? I just sent one two days ago, um, and I'll I'll send you a copy. Okay. Um, but there okay. you go. Any yeah. anything else on this on the grants? Questions, comments? Anything from other business? Any other business that Mr. Bill? Uh, hey. Tony, I uh, just wanted to report, I forgot to add it to the agenda or request to add it to the agenda. We, uh, I, I testified in front of the uh, Senate Committee on Technology and Energy or whatever on Friday. And it was an interesting, long, boring, as you suspect, meeting, hearing, as it has been in the years past. But interestingly enough, I went right before Maple Broadband and Maple Broadband talked about their 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 goals around building and their plans and how they're going for the Waitsville Valley Telecom and then started talking about how VCBB has to deal though with the lowest common denominator and not all CUDs are where they're at and and I really felt like they were throwing shade and so I made mention of that so if you guys wanted to see that I was just like wow these guys are throwing shade at us like you know we're you know it, but I mean our approach is different I mean that's the thing that you know I really wanted to hammer home for the senators. They didn't ask us any, <laughs> ask me any questions after my response, but I, you know, just talked about the fact that we're looking for a public-private partner, and then 
and again, like I really feel like our, our approach is going to yield a quicker response and we're going to have a better chance of universal service build out. Well, we sent the, we, I mean, if, if Maple Broadband has a better idea, we sent the RFP to them. They're welcome to respond. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Other business. Laura, Mark. Can I just ask, um, being a new new person, maybe mm -hmm. um, I do have a zillion questions. Not a zillion, but I'm not sure if asking them at this meeting is the right place. Um, I can throw one at you, and you can <laughs> well, tell me, uh, you know, go elsewhere, or we can chat about this off offline or something. Do you but, want to set something up, Laura, to have a bit of a chat? Maybe you, me, sure. uh, Bill, Van. Uh, I don't know if Mark, if you have questions or or sure, anybody, I got else who, anybody else who 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 yeah. wants to have a little. Um, I mean, if you have like a list of questions, um, if you can share it with us, that would be helpful, maybe, so that we sure. can I be can efficient with with everybody's time. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know, we'll try to answer as many questions as. Sure. As we can. I mean, Bill, initially, when I first reached out, you were very gracious in responding. And um, do you want me to just go that way or do you want to? I, I, I'm i sorry to interrupt, Chair Tony. Yeah. So you said I know you sent a list of questions this afternoon at like 158 that Van, I know, started working on. But like, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, having like an offline meeting to sort of answer those point by point, especially as a specific to each of your towns makes better sense i'd like tony's idea i'd be willing to sit down yeah i don't i well i'm not sure if you sent the email to me or if you didn't no. it's not a big deal but uh i didn't have a chance to look at anything uh, i didn't send it to i was you. I, I was on the road most of the day so i don't really know who's who so can we can we do it by zoom it seems yeah, totally. fairly convenient i don't see yeah. any reason we couldn't do it by, right. by zoom so great right. Uh, shall we just set up a Zoom meeting for maybe next Wednesday at five o'clock? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sounds good. Uh, kind of a general information, no yeah. Robert's rules and just uh, no rules. ask, bring all the questions we want. Right. That sounds good. I, I think that might, might be useful. Right. I mean, it's what you, we do. So you're lobby. saying the 27th? Um, yeah. Then... All right. Are you going to send out an invite to everybody, or? Yes, I'll send an invite to every everybody's email address that I have. Let's see. Okay. Let's see mm -hmm. All right, because I have that six o'clock meeting. See, we have a set date every third Wednesday at six o'clock. I have to be downtown. Yeah, that uh, that is one of the the next question we had after uh, okay. other business. Uh, the other, the only other business I had was just a uh, very brief report that I sat in on Hotel Co's call with, I forget which town, was it Sunbury, maybe? Anyway, they did a, they did a presentation and the public could dial in. We couldn't see the presentation, mm -hmm. but and it was just a, a, them offering, offering to, to uh, jump in and and deliver the service that uh, mm. that they would would that they want to get ahead on doing that they've offered in other states. And, um, I didn't find it real informative, but if there's another one, maybe I'll just forward it again. Uh, it, the other thing. Uh, and we, maybe we can touch on this next week was the second part of the question from CCI. They wanted longer to do this and they asked, do we need to want to own part, some or all of the network that's built? I, didn't, I couldn't really remember that we had a position on that. The response may be to let them come back to us with a creative statement and 
to take into account any requirements of the state funds, any grants that we get, if they require us to own some part of the network itself. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think we're going to have to find out if the grants, the construction grants, require right. us to own money for which, or own assets for which the grants are being issued. I don't know. Yeah, that's a very big, big question there, right? It, it is a big question. It, I'll bring it up with Rob Fish. We have a call next Tuesday, is it? I think so. I think, right. I think it's yeah. I have to. I do have to go here now. So, All looking right. forward to next week. All okay. right. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Mark. All right. Any anything else? The the only other thing on the agenda was uh, we had a request that we maybe pick a different time other than third Wednesday at five p.m. works for me but. discussion thoughts maybe it was mark because he has to leave at 10 uh, no it wasn't it wasn't mark i, I don't oh. remember who it was um, uh, okay well i mean we we we've got a little over half right of our of our towns present um Right. I mean, maybe maybe the thing to do, Van. Van I mean, we can um, maybe just send an inquiry to the the all the different reps and see if there's a a, a desire to change it. I don't know. I don't. I, barring some other, barring the person who wants to change it, we can table it and. Yeah. I'll leave the question on there, but I will set up the next meeting for what would we say the 20. Yeah, well, we'll have a meeting on the 27th will be like the question and answer period or question question and answer uh, time for folks and then the next meeting beyond that. that would be May what? 25th. May 25th. Yeah. Is that right? Oh no, the third would be the eight. The eighteenth. The eighteenth. Eighteenth. Yeah. May eighteenth. Yeah. Yeah. If it's the third Wednesday, then it's the eighteenth. Super. Okay. And Van, is there any update on that doodle you had out for meeting with Southern Vermont CUD? The last, the last I looked, there weren't any, but I will check it again. Okay. Um, Okay, check the day before yesterday. I will let you know. Yeah. Anything else? Any other business? Would would we entertain a motion to uh, adjourn? So moved. Okay. I'll second that. Larry and Laura. Okay. Larry, Larry and Laura. Thank you. <sighs> So question on the table is, shall we adjourn the uh, April meeting of the OCCUD? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. We are adjourned. Uh, don't know who's Thank recording, you. but uh, is that you, Van? Are you recording the meeting? I, I, I recorded to the cloud. Now, yeah. do I need to do anything afterwards? Nope, just hit stop and uh, I should be able to pick it up from there. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Oh, right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good evening. Bye. Bye-bye.